instrument is a, a very old Dutch cello. It's made by Peter Rambouts. He's considered one of the two or three great Dutch makers. Um, it was made in 1708. Uh, it came to me when I was uh, transitioning from the New York Philharmonic position that I had to teaching full-time at Peabody. Um, I had been playing on a beautiful Guadagnini cello that the Philharmonic had actually purchased um, for me when I came. Um, and so, uh, of course, when I left the orchestra, I had to give it back to him. So I was without a cello. And um, my, my dear friend and colleague, uh, Stephen Cates, who uh, was teaching at Peabody when I first um, started teaching there, unfortunately he passed away. Um, but uh, he knew about this cello and brought it to my attention one of the first visits I, I had at Peabody. And I fell in love with it and uh, have been playing it ever since. Okay, that's it. Actually, that's an easy one for me. <laughs> uh, I was a, a, a young freelancer in the Boston area, in literally right out of college. I had an, I had a, a, a freelance uh, orchestra job playing for an orchestra at the JFK Library uh, outside of Boston. Uh, I was playing in the orchestra. They have a stone floor there, um, and it was a very somber occasion. I believe it might have been the 20th year, 1983, since, since he had been uh, assassinated. And we were playing the Foray Requiem. Uh, and as I mentioned, this stone floor, and I didn't have a rock stop. And so in probably the most sublime, beautiful moment in the Foray Requiem, my end pin went out, and the high ceilings in that place made it sound like a sonic boom. It was, I mean, it wasn't, I really thought everybody, like your ears were rattling from this. And then, even to add to that embarrassment, uh, it happened again in another quiet moment, and I was completely mortified. Um, at that point, I think I stuck the end pin in the side of my shoe so that I knew at least that wouldn't happen again. <laughs> so bring a rock stop to this. <laughs> I would have to say, I mean, I've, had, I've been so fortunate to have many memorable performances in, in um, solo and chamber music and, um, and certainly in my orchestral career. Um, I would say that one of the things that really sticks out for me is uh, my first year in the New York Philharmonic um, and being conducted by Leonard Bernstein um, in, in a couple of weeks of programs. Unfortunately, that was the last time he ever conducted the Philharmonic. He died the next, uh, the next year. Um, but it was a really moving event for me because um, I thought he was unbelievable. He was an idol growing up and to be sitting there on the first desk of the New York Philharmonic with Leonard Bernstein was really a dream come true. And so, um, and he also was, he was such a, a kind of a father-like figure, very, very, um, he just was so ingratiating and, and um, he really, he made a point of welcoming me to the orchestra in a way that made me feel uh, like I was part of a, of a very special family. Um, well, the or of course the orchestra audition, you don't really get to choose the repertoire. Um, it's usually set for you, although you do have some choices in, in the solo repertoire that you play for an orchestra audition. I mean, my advice to students in any audition setting, for school, for competition training, is never play uh, a new piece, never play like a new friend, always play an old one. Um, I think that, you know, going into those situations, you need something which is, um, is just something you can really feel comfortable on in, in the sense of like, I, 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 if someone woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and put a cello in my hands, I could play that piece and I don't have to think too much about it. So my advice is whatever piece is your best piece, and it doesn't have to be the hardest piece either, particularly for say freshman auditions at conservatories. Um, sometimes the freshmen feel they have to play the most advanced repertoire, they have to play Dvorak, they have to play uh, Schumann, things like that. And in my, in my opinion, and I think my colleagues in general, we would much rather hear someone play um, a 
piece that they have a really good handle on. It really reflects how, where they are and they're playing rather than to try to play something that's, that maybe they shouldn't have uh, started yet.